Barbershop Podcast, lucky episode number 28, coming uh, at you live at uh, Justin TV. Uh, and of course, on our website, barbershoppodcast.com, from the confines of uh, Boxo Studio in the sacred city of Hamilton, Ontario, where the music is always alive and the uh, people are too. People don't wear coats in Hamilton when it rains. Not everyone, but in my neighborhood, they're impervious to rain. And uh, I'm really honored uh, with the show tonight. A little jacked up. Ryan, I know that you have a personal connection with tonight's show, and you are Absolutely. also looking forward to it. Yeah. We've got the uh, irascible uh, Ms. Uh, Buckshot a BB in the studio tonight, someone who I've been a big fan of for years, someone who's uh, connected on a lot of different layers uh, in this town uh, and uh, has some great insights and uh, likes to talk almost as much as me, I think. <laughs> so thanks for coming, Lynn. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. Yeah. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Um, I want to... Uh, you know, see how much ground we can cover because we were talking for you know a good half an hour before the show, and we just you know probably wasted a lot of good uh, <laughs> a lot of good uh, subject matter. Um, a lot of catching up to do. A lot of catching up to yeah. do. Yeah. Um, and, um, you were uh, you were saying that music, you know, is 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 something that's obviously been very special to you. You know, mm. tell me about uh, music in your life, and uh, if there was a that kind of magic moment when the clouds parted, or if that's something that just kind of <laughs> You know, because it was very cultural, people our age. Yeah, it was. It defined you in so many ways, and I, I don't know if it still does today to the same extent because there's other medium fighting with it. But music was really important when you were a teenager in oh, deciding yeah. who you were and what was important to you. Most definitely, and that's yeah, that's where it starts. Like, as soon as you become of age, and I was lucky because you know I'm an old cat, so I I didn't I was able to drink in bars at a very young age. And uh, we were seeing bands, you know, I'd be going down Larry's Highway, I lived in Toronto at the time, so it'd be all the punk scene that I was sort of involved in in Toronto. So it was really cool. And uh, and the big bands back then were a lot of the prog rock bands too, like, um, uh, you know, Yes and Genesis and, you know, um, Ian Anderson and sort of all those things were all coming through Toronto when, when I was a kid. So I had a chance to see a lot of really great, talented people back then. And that sort of did define, you know, me in terms of my musical influences and possibly the way I write today. Certainly not the way I play. They're much more proficient and, yeah. and great musicians, but uh, definitely influence the way I write. And, uh, and no doubt that works it into the you know a certain part of your brain. Even if you don't, you know, mechanically or physically have that playing ability, I believe that in your writing and the way you hear music, <clears throat> it's absolutely in, influenced by that. Mm -hmm. And to be a listener and to be a fan, and this is something that mm -hmm. some people you know, just uh, self-preservation for them as artists stop being fans and stop listening and and, and put all that energy into what they create. And other ones uh, are never stop being fans and never stop yeah, listening. So, right. um, you know, there's a love. You've always had the um, you know, opportunity, I would guess, to be front and center with, you know, so many great musicians over the years. Yeah, I'm um, very lucky. Yeah. Fortunate. Well, then it's certainly because of the fellow that I was seeing. I, mean, I had a, had those opportunities given to me, which was great. So, um, and yeah, and that of course furthers my influence and and, and and your sons as well. You were touching on yeah, the fact that right. you know, that was a great that Marky story. Ramone drove my yeah, son to school, school one day. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> It's true. It's a true story. And in fact, he was trying to uh, convince Alex that he didn't need school, that the Ramones quit in yeah. high school to become the Ramones. <laughs> and what the hell? He's in grade 10, and that's as far as he needs to go. And uh, and I said to Alex, well, how did your friends take it when he when you know you told him that Marky took you to school? And he said, I didn't tell him because they wouldn't believe me. <laughs> <laughs> Probably made a lot of kids start yeah. looking up Marky Ramone and the Ramones. All oh, the Ramones are, are, you know, I guess always going to be cool. You yeah. know, and, and one of those bands that even you commercialize the shit out of them that really doesn't sully what they did, you right. know. And uh, it's kind of like going to Niagara Falls and you're going to see a lot of postcards of the falls. <laughs> that doesn't make the falls any less, you know, original. Right. True. Great. Gotcha. Yeah. So, for like sure. rock and roll, and this is, uh, you, you find, you know, as a kid, as a, as a male boy, you know, the visceral feeling of rock and roll was very important mm -hmm. and the lyrical content kind of came later you know through osmosis um do you remember you know if it was one or the other like if because you're a songwriter and yeah. some, some songwriters are made and some are born like do you, which well, you consider you know, it, it was sexy you know because you're 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 17 and you're you're 
sexy to begin with because you're 17, Indeed. a young chick, <laughs> and you know it's yeah. just great. And and rock and roll was just a place for me and to just go and feel alive, really. And uh, it, and I didn't think of it in the content of the musical ability or the songwriting ability. I never really, I didn't break it down like that. Yeah. It was just, um, I was on the scene, I enjoyed it, and it was a sexy vibe that I wanted to be involved in. And so that sort of, you know, was the draw. <laughs> <laughs> more yeah. than, than really the music in itself. It wasn't really until much later when I started to write and started to become a performer that I really, you know, the whole listening to people and the way they wrote and how they express themselves started to become important. Yeah, and, and I hear that a lot. That's when it starts, when you start paying attention, when you realize this is what I want to do. Right, yeah. Now, how long did you play and, and do these sort of things before you had your first band? Did you jump into a band fairly um, early on with some mates, or was this? Yeah, well, no, it's kind of all happened very late in life. Um, I always played music, and I was one of those kids who like, will you sing at my wedding, and will you, you know, will you come to Mother's Day luncheon and play for the ladies, and so I always sort of played acoustically and did that. Um, but I also, I don't know if you know this, uh, but I was also involved in theater, and I was a dancer. I danced for the Royal Ballet, so I I sort of came from a theatrical um, place to begin with, and I always wanted to be a part of the Young People's Theater, and so it was sort of um, uh, music at that point wasn't really in the forefront. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, um, when I went uh, settled down here in Hamilton and I had my child, then I started picking up the guitar again. It gave me something to do. Um, I had to, I had to be more at home um, to be with my child, and so that's really when I started to start to take myself a little bit more seriously. And I remember actually having a, I was in a dance troupe even then, and I remember having a dance troupe over and they said, I played them a song and they're like, oh honey, you missed your calling. Mm. I was like, I'm not going to believe that. I'm, I'm, no, actually, I, I think, thank you. If you feel that way, then maybe there is a calling. So, um, and then that's when I just started to, to move forward. And then my first real band, I don't know if you remember this one, but it was the Sapphire Fly Band. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I Blue remember Angel that one. And yeah. Mike Williams and Barry Lewis. And, and, and that was an important little place that people used to go to. And, yeah. and there would be uh, artistic people together and, and you could get a couple beers for a donation or it wasn't necessarily one for the other, but it happens <clears throat> in order for that to give birth to that environment and it yes. was very rich and a lot I met a lot of great people yeah, at yeah. that place and so you went there just to say I want to be around these people I want to play some of my cool. music and people are like I like what you're doing do you want maybe want to do something together yeah. So Sapphire Fly was Sapphire Fly, you. And, yeah, and you're right. You, you, those environments, you know, they were like the factories, right? We yeah. we were doing music in old warehouses and factories and getting together. And you're right, and and selling a beer for a dime so that we could keep keep these things going. And we were living in those places too. So yeah. not only were um, you know we were creating, but we're that 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 was our home. And musicians were coming and going, and and it was just it was fabulous yeah it really it, it, was they were heady times and it mm -hmm. was when that part of downtown i mean it, it, people are, are fairly familiar with hamilton and, and what's happened to it artistically but it, those were lean times and you oh, yeah. finding those spots were, were tough Downtown. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and we were all lean in those yeah. times. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I hope I don't have to go back to that no. again. But no, yeah, but your, your salad yeah. days are something yeah. that you look back on. Not right. like, but I mean, it's like your 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 design. Oh, there are salad you, you days. Know, yeah, you know, you know, it's, it's, it's it's a progression, but you can certainly look back and say, you know, I wouldn't trade that for the world. Yeah. You know? Oh no, it was it. I'm so grateful to ha have had that and to live through it. And I lived through it for years. It wasn't a short term thing i was in above chester's for six years yeah. you know so uh it wasn't a short-term thing and but then how many great musicians came through hamilton and we had those after parties right you yeah. know the new york dolls i mean the ramones you, you just you know, just amazing bands that came through so um she wolves you know just it was just great great those times definitely but so what did uh, sapphire fly teach you and going in i mean there must have been excitement for me i'm at heart i, I love to market i love to sell i love to be yeah. evangelical about something and music is one of the few things that i get passionate about mm -hmm. now when you put sapphire fly did you see because you're a big fan of the theatrics yeah. and someone yeah. who sells the entire image of <clears throat> that i guess it would be uh multimedia multi-sense media you know oh, well, that you, as far as the look and the feel 
of putting that together <clears throat> was 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 there an idea of how you put that band together or did you kind of let it be uh, no i you know I, I i connected with another great artist in the city cynthia hill you know and she was a visual artist too so it was it was sort of a match made in heaven i had the dance theater background and she had the skills to create the craziest puppets and headpieces and um so i think that was a really combined effort and what i loved about the sapphire fly for me is that it was a it allowed me to do this really campy rock and roll show but what it didn't really allow me to do was actually during in that band and if i i would confess i think during that band i realized to myself i i personally need to become a better musician yeah. i need to and so to become a better musician i also need to play with great players yeah. so that i can learn from them and i think that's what that lesson in that band was we had so much fun i would i think it was one of the greatest experiences of my life we had some extraordinary shows people didn't get us they were like yeah. what the hell is this <laughs> right but when you saw us yeah. you couldn't take your eyes yeah. off us because you knew there was really Brilliant. quirky and fun yeah. and and still rock and roll yeah. injected right yeah. so so, um, yeah, but uh, then I did know. And, and it was we had recorded a, a song, and I listened back to that song. I was like, mm, I need to get better. So uh, it was, unfortunately, and, I, you know, you hate breaking up an act because it was so much fun. But it had to be for me to yeah. move on to, to some writing. Yeah. yeah. And so did you go through any extended periods between that period and now where music just had to take a back seat to the, all the myriad of other no. things you do? So no. at that point, you were still doing this is forward and it's progressive. Aggressive. Yeah, and then it was Poison Arrows. Yeah. yeah it was, and the po was Poison aggressive. Arrows, I still, uh, let me pull this out. Actually, you get a kick out of this. It's holding up an amplifier. We're going to see if it <laughs> collapses. The Poison Arrows CD. <laughs> That's what they're doing today. <laughs> oh, yay. Yeah. Oh, am I right there? You got yeah. my sticker. Right there. Awesome. There we go. That's great. So that's vintage classic. That's awesome. Very, you know, very impressed with that band. I saw that sticker at the horseshoe on the ceiling in the band room, and someone wrote on it. And so I was like, what the hell is that? Who wrote on it? What, what does it say? <laughs> it better be good. <laughs> and that was terrible. <laughs> I got up there and said something like, you crusty old corporate bitch or something like that, right? Like, ah, damn it. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I got to make a t-shirt out of that for yeah. sure. I was yeah. like... Yeah. So you got a picture? Yeah, yeah, some, some. Uh, I got defaced. Oh, well, <laughs> I got defaced. Oh, can so, I steal sorry. that? That's, that's beautifully punk. I got defaced. Oh my goodness! Uh, and so good times are are had. You know, it tends when you when you swim in this environment, the water is warm and friendly. Uh, it attracts your sharks, but it also has yeah. tons of color and life. Yeah. And I I know that I, uh, one of the reasons I can't leave this business is. <clears throat> I giggle, you know. I just, I just love the the people. I couldn't script them better. There are so many awesome. personalities. Great, great. You know, yeah. And well, you're doing a great job. This is exciting well, for you. Yeah, it is. I love the bringing yeah. the people I've known for years, and it's like eventually I'll get to people who I don't know, mm -hmm. and then it'll be even more fun, you know. But I mean, the, I've been, I've been so impressed since I came to Hamilton, <clears throat> and and there really are times when I fight to want to give it up because you, you just you know again the more you learn you're like what am i doing you know it's like there's so many you know there's so many great people but then you realize that everyone has like in a band or a family a strength and if you work together you're stronger as a as a unit so yeah. you know like i said i always always love doing this sort of thing where you know whether it's a the technology exists now where we can do yeah, it you know great. so it's, a, it's it's happy times for us I'm munching forward having some beer and some we didn't have any so we didn't barbecue tonight you know the nice. weather weather's been a bit unsettled yeah. you know didn't want to fight that i ate before a game oh you so. didn't man, barbecue. Uh -huh. man, we did not yeah no tonight. we usually barbecue so barbecue make that part of the show yeah, yeah. yeah. it should podcast. yeah we like that Life's pretty we're, good. We, we're, we're actually going to put this up but we're gonna we're looking for a uh what are we looking for money yeah we're looking for money <laughs> constantly looking for money we got some, we got some, we, we got some feelers it's out money. they're feeling around yeah, your wallet good, good. right now yeah. we should you know, put a paypal account up on the page there you go yeah, yeah there we go our own crack yeah. starter and uh yeah and get crack that. starter <laughs> <laughs> and get uh, an intern. We want to get an intern because we think it would. Yes. He, he would have a lot to learn here, and he could lot, help us out with a lot. Like when we run you out of beer, that. or all we're the, hungry. Yeah. All <laughs> the barbecuing <laughs> skills. It'll be the list of all the technical stuff, all Pro Tools and the board and the camera work. And it'll be like and barbecue. Yeah. yeah. You know, all the stuff that's not fun about this for me. <laughs> this was a great idea until I realized I got two hours of work before and after to do this yeah, fucking no thing. Kidding, but. Right. 
It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. That's Ryan, what, come on. Yeah. And passion, we're drinking right? when yeah. we do yeah, it. So it's not that's really. That's why we get easy. ice, so you don't have to yeah. wait an hour for the beer to get cold. <laughs> and, and, and at thirty dollars a case, you really shouldn't have to wait for your beer to be that's cold. Right. You know, Got it. I have a problem with that. So the Poison Arrows introduce you yeah. to uh, a number of great players. Yeah. Um, Luge was in the uh, was yeah. the band. He's a smoking guitar player. Yeah, haven't had him on the show yet. I think he would be a lot of fun. Eh, yeah, Ryan? You've be got great some, fun. You've you got really some Luge stories. I got some. I got some. <laughs> yeah. I, I got a bunch classics. that I'm going to have to run by him to make right. sure I can tell yeah, them. Gotcha. So we won't get into that. He's I think gotcha. he's uh, he's playing with Tommy Gun for yes, the show yes, right yes, now. He is. So right maybe show, uh, there's that connection. We could get him down on his own though. He's got tons of stories. Yeah. That guy. Me yeah, and him. I have tons of stories of him. That like I said once. I get permission Cleared, yeah. would be great sh- stories for the podcast. Yeah, he's a, he's an individual, a sweetheart, and he goes at everything yeah, 100 miles I love an hour. Jay so much. Yeah, yeah, he's a darling. And he always makes the place smell nice. <laughs> <laughs> the walk said the whole place smells like Pantene Pro V. That's fair. <laughs> he's got the name. It's true. I know. I have to admit, I, I miss the arrows, the mm-hmm. camaraderie that yeah, we had with that band. That really was a really cool them. band. Yeah, it was weird, a, really, really cool. A lot <laughs> of fun at some of those fun. shows. Yeah. Yeah. Good, awesome. Glad to hear that. And rock and roll. Yeah, it was rock and roll. It was rock and roll. A little more straight up than on the nose, but it still had it still had a quirky nature to it. You know, I found it, and it was it was like not not highbrow rock and roll, but it was, you know, it wasn't it wasn't run of the mill. That's for sure. You know, so I uh, nothing I do seems to be run of the mill. No, I think the the unit I'm in now is a little bit more. Main the Street, maybe. yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like we calmer. decide. Okay, I can sell, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sell this over a wider net, you know, because uh, you know that becomes part of it along the way. It's like it has to be a uh, um, an understanding that p- other people have to like it. I have right. to like it. I can't do it if I don't like it. I can't yeah. do it if they don't like it. Gotcha. I have to know that I'm. I've got a, that my circles cross over, you mm. know, fairly confidently that I think I know what people like. Yeah. You seem like you've always, someone who's always pretty, pretty good at having your, your, your finger on the pulse. Are you, you know. I don't know if I do. I wish I, I wish I could say yes to that, but um, I don't really think that I do have my finger on the pulse. I just, um, I write from an emotional state usually you know it just and it all comes at once there's no melody and then there's lyrics later it's like it's a complete package that falls from the sky and it happens very quickly if i write and so because of that like this new record it does cross a lot of different genres it's really hard to say what kind of record it is because i've got an alt country song on there i've got a straight up rock and roll song on there and then i've got sort of a poppy rocky song on there so it 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 really transfers the great news is is it's the same band throughout so it does tend to work let's talk about this band this is a band you've been playing with for a little while and yes um after the the poison arrows and progression through a writing period yeah what did you have in your mind and that turned to this fruition that turned into this well after the poison arrows i thought it was done that that was it you know we had gone through some some changes in terms of the um, players with the arrows at the end of at the end of the arrows and we shouldn't have done that we shouldn't have dragged it through the mud like that i was like let's just let this horse go you know come yeah, on yeah. it's like it's days. not working <laughs> yeah it's not working and, we, and i always find that if you start changing over players it's not it's never the same yeah. so um that was my fault again you know it's just like another learning experience just don't do it and that's why the evelyn Dix, yeah. the one with Lori yates when jimmy vapp had moved off to oshawa we just said no way we're not replacing them that's it that was the dicks and that ends our life with, yeah. with the dicks yeah. right so uh but with this band, um, it kind of was a bit more strategic because I had songs that I was ready to record, and so then I needed to find players to play with. And this was a secret. This is a secret. It's boyfriend. a secret boyfriend. So it's Lib yeah. Bibi and the secret and the boyf- secret boyfriends. boyfriends. And I call them the secret boyfriends. Well, first of all, because I I love them. It's hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> but also because. Uh, I thought, well, if I did, if a member, because they were sort of coming in as sort of like, will you play these songs with me? They might not stay as band members. It may not end up formulating into a band. So um, the good news is it did. And and uh, and now I've got a kick-ass band that are at the Secret Boyfriends. So it's... Um, it turned out to be great. So who's in The Secret Boyfriends for those uninitiated? Uh, the people in The Secret Boyfriends is Andrew Aldridge. Um, and he's been known, like he's played with Sarah Sleen. Yeah. Well, you know, you know and multi-talented. You can, you can do so much. Multi-talented, yeah. He's just, and he, he's, he's just super great. Um, uh, Paul Cameron from Down Boy. Yep. He's on bass. Uh, Greg Briscoe's on keys. 
Uh, who am I missing? I think Guitar. Greg Briscoe oh. is the Borg of the keyboard players. It's yeah, like, he is. He's he's the cat. And Gene Champagne on drums from yeah, the Killjoys. Wonderful. Yeah, I wonderful. Know. So great, a great unit. Yeah. And uh, pretty excited. Pretty excited. Pretty so excited. Um, I want to play. I want to play a tune off it, and uh, it was uh, recorded by Andrew. It, well, uh, Andrew did all the pr- production. production. He was the producer. He played, of course. He's the guitar player. He played on the record. Came up with some fabulous ideas, and uh, then Nick Bogona had mixed and mastered it. So Nick knows his stuff as well. Yeah. So we're gonna. He's the guy. It's uh, this is the title track, right? This is the title track. The title track, and this is uh, the one that people have heard, and and they're buzzing about it. And yeah. it's and if you had to. De- describe it yep how would you know again you said you've got a lot of different styles on this album yep. what's this baby uh it's it's a it's a rock song um probably have heavily influenced by queen and uh, uh you know Mott the hoople that that kind of sound but um yeah it's just about you know it's well i work in the fashion industry as you know so mm. um it is kind of about that short-lived industry uh even in music, you know, when you want to be in the big industry machine, youth is the only thing you got on your side. So I think mo- lots of us in these industries are merchants of youth. Yes. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of what the song's about. Well, it drives us, it drives the economy, and it uh, makes us older people feel young when it's done right. <laughs> if so we hang out with young people. If you people. hang around with young people. <laughs> yeah. And there's a, l- a little something off of uh, uh, Lynn Beebe's latest and greatest effort, Merchants of Youth. On barbershoppodcast.com. Blue 
Merchants of Youth from Lynn Beebe and her secret boyfriends. The latest offering from uh, prolific Hamilton well, come Toronto, but she's ours now. Very proud of her. Uh, Lynn Beebe, you've got you've touched on a few other things. Um, two things you touched on I'd like to expand a bit on. Your work with um, um, Lori Yates and Chris Hewson uh, with the Evelyn Dix and uh, Blackbird Studio, something that, you know, has just flourished and is, yeah. is, is, is such a wonderful kind of story for Hamilton and yourself, being very busy and creative. How have both of those things kind of fit into your life recently? Okay. <laughs> well, Lori Yates, man, well, what can I say about Lori? Um, here's the funny thing about Lori. <laughs> I Johnny Johnny Bud and I had a show with her at the old uh, underground. Lou had booked the show and asked us to open for her. It was the first time I had ever seen her live. It was the first time I had met Lori. And uh, I was blown away. It was like <laughs> she was a cow punk chick right through and through. It was like that's she's awesome. And she had this guitar full of all these star decals. I don't know if you've seen yep. her play now. She still has that guitar. Yep. And uh, she went back to Toronto and I thought to myself, I'm gonna I'm I'm stealing that idea. I'm going to dollar store and I'm getting some stars and putting them on my guitar. Yeah. So I did. It was this guitar, actually. Put them on my guitar. And uh, sure enough, she moves to Hamilton. <laughs> Next thing you know, we're in a, f- a friggin' band together. I have to go home and I have to take off all my stars. I know, it's so like I peeled off up. all my stars. And they left these sticky marks for a long time. I had to pee on now. I just have these two great you stickers. See, that's eh? great. But, uh, but that, that's kind of... So I finally confessed to her that I ripped her off. And she and, probably and, thought, <laughs> loved that story, eh? Yeah. So, so that, that was my Lori Yates story. But, um, you know, we started... Houston actually called us up one day to do some backups and called us the Evelyn Dix. The name came from him. And uh, we sang together and... We had taped ourselves too, and we're like, who's singing what? We couldn't even differentiate at times. It was so magical, our voices together. And uh, I'm like, and I just was blown away, honored that I even had that privilege to sing with her. But it, we stuck, and it was great. And then we, we formed the Evelyn Dick Band, which was great. We brought in Cleve Anderson from Toronto, a you know great drummer, uh, Battered Wives drummer. You probably know Cleve, yep. right? And Blue Rodeo, you play yep. with those guys, and um, Jimmy Vapid yep. on guitar, and that was the Evelyn Dix. Lasted about a year. We were uh, we came out fast, like we came out hard and fast. We ended up recording Einstein's Brain. It's now on a, a seven inch, uh, being released by or has been released by Hammer City Records. So. We just lucked out with that yeah. little unit. It was awesome. Yeah, and every once in a while when you find yourself in a little flat line and you get that spark, it it, it, it projects you onto your next project. Yeah. You know, not, gee, that's the same word almost. But yeah. uh, I find that it's like the amount of energy that you put into it and the amount of energy it gives back to you is so important. Really? You know, it's like the wave that pushes you. It's so true. Time. And it probably brought me back to music because after the Poison Arrows were done, it was like, I'm done. I'm finished, and uh, and then, and then even Laura Yates was saying the same thing. I'm retiring. I'm like, really? Can we actually do that? Yeah, like, are can, we allowed? Are, can we retire from music? And I just realized we can't really. And she, she that was a fleeting moment for yeah. Laura. It's yeah. like um, she can't retire. Yeah. Yeah. It's just in you. It's who you are. And so that was great. And uh, and so that yeah, that sort of got me going again because I was writing with Lori, and it's like, oh, okay. I've got some songs still in me, and I can. I want to keep going. So, right. that's what started out the writing for Merchants of Youth and Blackbird. Blackbird is a uh, is a design yeah. a fashion design studio yeah. that makes. I, I mean, what you're famous for is your your dresses, but you, you obviously yes. make a whole line of other products. Oh uh, well, well, pretty much now we're focused on dresses yeah. and coats. I mean, we do a full collection for sure, uh, but that that tends to be what we you know that's our bread and butter yeah. is our dresses and they seem to be well received we're textile printers so we print our fabrics and we design them and make clothes out of them and it's uh and, and that's what you're known for not only the cuts yeah. and how beautiful they are but the prints are fantastic they're edgy it's, the daring and you know interesting and the woman who's gonna wear that has to you know it's like that's it has to have the you know the the ability to pull that off, and yeah, the, and the confidence, right, to go in and say, I'm, you know, I'm going to put with, wear something with insects on it, yeah, and it's going to look awesome. I uh, totally and yeah. cute too, because I mean, we yeah. might take a really frightening print, you know, like insects and um and make the dress really yeah. cute. So. And it, it ties back to the music and ties back to the art yeah. in general. It's like you know, you want Definitely. to play those 
those people appreciate that yeah. if their mind gets fucked in the right way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's true, Kevin. And and it's funny too because when I started doing, when I really got serious in, into design, was also after the Poison Arrows. I was sort of touching base on it when I was still in the Arrows. But then I really started to, I went back to school actually after the Arrows broke up too. I went back to George Brown. I took pattern drafting and uh, I took a textile course. I mean, so we, you know, uh, and then it's sort of like your creative nerve sort of trans transfers. So it's now it's not music anymore. It's now clothing and design, and it transferred. And then and then I sort of thought, and then even further thought, music is done for me now. Yeah. And uh, but it was very temporary. It was like, okay, I'm in this realm, and I'm, this is what I'm doing. Um, but pretty soon it was like, no, I need. The stage yeah, is, a, stage is a what tickle. I love. And, and yeah. that stage, it's, and it, yeah. you, know, you can play, but when you get on the stage and you do well on the stage, it's it's. and I think it was the Blue Rodeo guy seeing an early documentary for them and they worked at the post office. And uh, one of the quote, and I don't know who it was, said, you know, once you've been on stage, you're wrecked for everything yeah. else. You can't it's go back so to that true. job. You can't. It's you so really true. Can't. I agree. So... I want a little live performance out of you. I made you bring oh, yeah. the guitar. Oh, you didn't make yeah, you. I asked you, and yes, you said you yes. Did, you did. You know, you did, and it's one of the things did. we okay. like is that people can see you. You're not just I'll a, sing a song. You're not just a trailer queen. You can <laughs> floor the floor. You can pull the All song right. up for us. Anything you want to tell us about it? Um, the song is called Loveless. Uh, it was probably um, the very last song I wrote for the record, and uh, we just decided to record it as a very pop song. Um, so yeah, that's. That's really it. Okay. There's not much more to tell you about it. A little one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Lynn Beebe and yourself, Loveless, from barbershoppodcast.com. Right. You know what? I need to sort myself out better here. Sorry, yeah. guys. You know, squish, squish on the couch isn't <laughs> this, always the best uh, way. This couch that's yeah. drooping. Yeah, you still got to sit on the edge. <laughs>
Wonderful. Hey. A little bit of love like this. Yeah, yeah. And that's what it's about, isn't it? At the end of the day, I mean, you got to have your grins, you know, got to make you enough money to, to put some food in the fridge, but it's all about the love, baby. Yeah. And, and you know, as much as you want to commercialize that, it's true. It's true. And uh, I think that uh, music and, and art in general is what motivates people for the great extent and I've often thought that that even in the most you know primal society doing the most brutal things marching an army across a nation you do it to music to a drum beat you know to songs the boys can whistle because that uh, you know whistle while you work yeah. sort of thing it does uh, it, it has an effect and I'm curious because you have an eye for this sort of thing where do you see music do you think it's still with you know because frankly there has been a, a gross commercialization over the past 50 years progressively it's become cheapened much like mm -hmm. uh, all media mm -hmm. do you think that there's always going to be an undercurrent and a resurgence or like are you worried that that people will there'll be a generation who who truly doesn't know who'll never see real live music to go out to shows and yeah see or just and you know stuff? like um, all they know is what's available the yeah, there's, there's a lot going on in terms of um, uh, just so much coming at you all the time, right? And everything is so accessible. And uh, you can get a little lazy when you're um, when you're searching out material or or uh, it's just so much. It's just so much media and so much visual. And how do you keep your patience to get through a documentary when you there's could be another one that you could watch and or another band you can see. I, I don't know. Um, I do I do worry about human interaction. I worry about that because uh, you don't really have to leave your home to have that now, um, you know, with, with the social medias. Uh, I do worry about that. And, um, but I'm, you know, I hope, I hope that it, we travel a little bit backwards the way fashion has, yeah. you know, that vintage has become so popular now yeah. that maybe going out and touching and smelling another person is the way we want to meet people as opposed to um, doing it on, on social media. Uh, I hope that. I, I'm afraid it's a machine we can't stop. I'm interested on where it goes. I mean, my dad my dad was always involved in um, high-end high, high end, uh, security system so you know he'd be doing maximum prism jails and the OPP cars and installing all this communication stuff and and when I was a kid you know he had a watch and I was watching Dick Tracy and he said you know that watch that Dick Tracy has on you're gonna be able to speak into it one day and you're gonna be able to talk to me yeah. and he's was so right you yeah. know so it's I don't think you could stop it right? I just right. don't think you can stop it so I, I'm saddened by it. Um, I, I, I personally fought Facebook for a very long time, and then it became a necessary evil. Yeah, it's yeah. like, well, I got shows to promote and dresses to promote, and I, I, I need to be there. Yeah. So. Um, it's it's not a substitute, but it's, yeah. it's, you have to augment it. I'm worried, as you are, about the, the, the losing that that element. You yeah. know, that be able to kitsch, you know, and, yeah. and, and mingle yeah. in real life. And the difference between a super, super high-end uh, sound surround system watching a concert on a giant plasma TV versus feeling the, the, the air energy. mover, being in a club yeah. with the people bumping into you. Right, yeah. You know, there's, I think it's that, that human element that's missing. And also fashion-wise, it, it, it's not lost on me that with all the possibilities that you can make a guitar look like, you, they just can't get away from the ones that were made in the 50s or the 30s, you know, right. be it the acoustics or the electrics like they stop trying you know right. people will, will try a slight variation on it but nothing else looks right yeah you know and and I'm, part of me thinks about the same thing about music that mm -hmm. there'll always be you know a group of people who recognize that yes and, and it's just i guess a matter if they're um centers of influence and a lot of times if they're not when they're kids they're going to be when they're 40 and they're rich yeah. you know so we're, i'm seeing that and, mm -hmm. and i think as long as there's people who can keep it alive, you know, and keep playing it, keep doing it. And, and yeah. this is the thing I found about doing this, it's like there's no shortage of, of kids who are still have a, a dream to rock and roll. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So I don't know, it's, um, I know the bars are less full, definitely, yeah. you know, and the, you know. It's smoking, it's, you so, know, people will smoke until you make smoking illegal. The people who <laughs> smoke or the people who drink or the people who go out and spend money in a bar when they should be putting it into an RSP. 
Okay, and and they call it irresponsible, but they're also fun. Those are the fun people. Yeah. And I'm sorry, but you cut you cut off an artery of fun. Yeah, and you can justify it all you want, but to ignore it, you know, I found mm-hmm. a here. There's a picture right here of, of, of me on stage and. 2002 and I'm smoking on stage. Oh my goodness. That wasn't okay. that long Lift ago. your pinky yeah. finger. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay, I'm smoking on stage <laughs> and I looked at that and I was shocked. And I was like, "Oh, oh yeah, and it was only 10 years ago." Yeah. You know, so, you know, for me huh. it's like saying, "Okay, you're not it's 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 you should have let the owner say, "Okay, you know what? If I'm going to have a smoking bar and I'll and I'll roll the dice." Right. And and yeah, I should be able to have the right, you know, to, to go, to to go you know, bar. unless yeah. you make it because it's it, it truly killed the business, you yeah. know, like, and it's hard. I, 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 t- I agree with you on that, that, and I'm not a smoker, no. uh, but, um, and I, I, I appreciate singing in non-smoking bars, yep. but uh, I do agree with you. I think that that's kind of what bars were for, smoking and drinking and socializing, I kind of, but... Yeah, and it may take yeah. another thirty years where it's completely out, and then that people will come back. But yeah. it's just like with the Tiger Cats, where people are like, oh, "I'd go to the Tiger Cat game if you put the stadium over here." <laughs> no, they wouldn't. They're fucking liars. Okay, they don't go to Tiger Cat games. <laughs> if you right. love the Tiger Cats, you'll go to Ivor Win, right. you know, and you'll exactly. see them there. And it's the same with if you support live music, you'll go out. Yeah. And all these people who said that, yeah, the reason I don't go out is because they smoke. Fuck you, you're a liar. Okay, I'm sorry, I gotta say that because there's bars going down and there's bands. Yeah, and the bands are making half as much as they did, you know. And I'm sorry, but yeah. it comes down to where it's like you got your way yeah. and you didn't back it up. Right. And it could be well the economy also tanked at the same time. It's like, yeah, well, you know, yeah. I don't buy that either. I've yeah. never seen a price increase for bands in what 12 years now. I've been yeah. doing this. Yeah. Never seen never. a price increase. And, and what I, I remember, five hundred dollars. And then it went to you had to work hard for three fifty. Yeah. And if you made five hundred, you had to have forty songs and play three and a half hours and be able to play in different places. And and you know, then I got was booking the other end and it's like, you know, you gotta you really want to do right by the bands, but at right. the same token, it's like they're not concerned with your bottom line, yeah. you know, and saying, you know, this has to be a sellable product, right. you know, so I, I, I need to get the people back in here and you cut half of my crowd, yeah. you know, and you didn't replace it with a government sponsored happy hour, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, you know, and these, these are little things that people don't talk about, but it's another brick in the wall and make yeah. it difficult. Yeah, Riffle. it's it's a it's a it's a tough it's a tightrope to walk really because uh, you know you know I'm doing this open stage thing and um, it's Tuesday so, nights at this ain't Hollywood yeah, Tuesday nights um, at this ain't Hollywood Cat Piano with uh, Lynn Beebe and yeah. I, and Andrew uh, Andrew Aldridge, Aldridge and we're hosting you know. it and you know we're seeing some really fine talent come through there and um, really fine talent and this fine talent also just plays for free in so many other places because they want to be heard they're original songwriters and they want their music out and so they're not doing it for money they're, t- they're doing it to be heard so there's that fine line so then they don't sell themselves they don't make money doing it then it hurts other artists because if you can tap into that artist and and have a, a uh, you know a musician in your club that you don't have to pay so much for i mean it's just such a, a bizarre business that way so money has never really been um i don't think of money unfortunately i maybe i should i can't i can't make money in this business yeah. um you know i might have that lucky lottery song that Someone gets dies. Picked, yeah. picked up or i'm you know i did sell yeah. one from the arrows the this ain't happening to me to universal records that might happen again but uh if it doesn't doesn't happen doesn't happen this is not going to stop me as an artist yeah. right so yeah, I yeah. Sometimes, sometimes <laughs> a painting that doesn't sell is your favorite. Yeah, and you're secretly happy. You know, yeah. it doesn't sell because sure. you're not doing it for the money. That's right. And again, this is what eats the tail of the beast: exactly. is that we don't do it for money. And people are like, how can you sell yourself out? And it's like, well, if you play Skinner covers all night for free, then you truly are an idiot. How you sell yourself you know? out is it's like a drug. Like you, you were you were saying earlier that uh, one of these musicians you spoke to is like once you stand on stage, you're ruined forever. You know, you just want to keep doing it and at all costs. Yeah. You know, sad but true. <laughs> true, yeah, and, yeah. It, and it taps something inside us. You know, and, yeah. and comedians say that that's when you strip it right down. It's just you and the microphone, and you're making people laugh. Yeah, that that is the drug. That's good. You know, that just blows everything else away. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of these comedians are people who who are multi talented. That's why they tend to get the, the sitcoms, right. or you know, do very well. Once yeah. you're at that point where it's just you, and you can make people feel good, it right. feeds it feeds you, and you're feeding them at the same time. We're being in a band. There's a lot of logistics, and there's a lot of, 
inference and a lot of politics mm-hmm. and yeah. that crap. All that. Plus, I've often, you know, I've often, <laughs> you know, thought about how great it would be to, you know, not even have to bring your own mic if you don't want to and keep all the money yourself, right? <laughs> not having to break down gear alone. How much would that be worth to you tonight? Um, all of it. <laughs> it depends on if it's winter or. Yeah. But I'm I'm old now, so I've already written off carrying drummers' shit in the winter. That's the yeah. first thing anybody I play with. That's the first thing I yeah. listen. I'll carry your fucking cymbals all summer long. Yeah. I'm not touching Touchy. any of your drum gear in the winter because it's Poor I've done, it's too much. Poor, that's that why they're enough. hard to get here in Hamilton. Yeah. yeah. Poor drummers. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for the first for one them. to truly embrace the electronic kit so they yeah. can bring it in a suitcase and go, ah, oh, I don't care. You yeah. know, as long as I got an amp, I'll sound all right. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, the technology of music in itself, you know, it makes it, it like what the show doable. It makes having a, a studio where you've got a creative mind mm-hmm. doable. And I found that relationships are the key. The relationships that you make over the years with people and how you treat them and how they treat you and a general love and, and, and a general interest in what some other people are doing and the realization that you know this graphic artist is going to have a, a service that's going to be appreciated and used by people mm-hmm. you know you, you must see a lot of this cross um, you know breathing that you know goes on where, where people energize each other mm-hmm. are you buying into that what's happening in <laughs> Hamilton right now has always been there and just being recognized now or are we actually doing a better job at working together in terms of recognition artist recognition and, 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 and how it's going to benefit like it like for for me I'm, I'm still not at all happy with the way municipal politicians look at what a driving force and what a history and what a potential where you can't ship a ton of steel over the internet but yeah. you can ship music and, yeah. and art over the internet and we and we're producing scads of technical technologically advanced really good students yeah and a lot of great musicians and a lot of great artists you know that that, that could be a, a, oh. a viable export you gotta ask yourself how many politicians in this city are really coming out to see live yeah live music and and really have their finger on the pulse there i i think what's happened is that we are so grassroots here that we've been driving it ourselves as artists you know and um and as artists we are now making statements and um, Dave Keurig, who opened up Mixed Media, was a driving force there, starting the art crawls on James Street, and um, you know, and and then now politicians have to listen, yeah. you know, and 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 corporations are finding out yes. that well, there's, a, there's a, a scene, a critical mass, a tipping point yes. that you got to push to yourself, to right, get to that right, point. right, you know, and 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 it'll be tragic for us because then the rentals become too high and we'll be forced out of our locations i mean it's all going to be historically repeat itself over and over again and 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 people will rob the ideas from us and i mean yeah. and barton so street typical. will be the next place where the, the bohemians will go you know, again i'm already getting mad and yeah. it hasn't even happened, happened. yet <laughs> because you it's know it's going to I know. but uh, uh yeah because the panic has set in it's yeah. sort of like whoa whoa and it's um it's frightening and i mean i see it because i'm right on the beat and uh, and people are, you know, designers from other cities, which which I don't fear at all. I want more designers to come into the city, but um, uh, corporations are coming down. What's going on down here? What's the buzz? What's I used to business? be able to spot What's an the... outsider on James Street. Yeah, I can outsider. now. I can't. You know, it's like sometimes it's like that's yeah. it. That could be total Hamilton yeah, hipster. So, we have our so own now. It's happening, but um, and so I think that the politicians are waking up to that, and and of course there was an article in the paper about you know really you know trying to map out Hamilton as a musical capital and maybe get the Junos back here and you know work on some of those strategies and um, can't help but think that it's people because of Lou Molinero yeah. and Tim uh, Patayek and and those those kinds of people who are are driving that yeah. right so. And, Brody Schrindeman, all the people who yeah. are booking, eh? Rick and uh, Mark, writing about Rick it, you know, Taylor. for like years, exactly. you know, it's like the guy writes really well. And oh, he's like, you know, and then there's something fantastic. that's like, you know, a lot of people talk about his radio show, but Rick, mm-hmm. Rick is a, is a prolific writer and he Absolutely. writes really well and he has a great knowledge of, Absolutely. of music and someone like that, it's like, oh, he's on the radio. He must have, a, you know, you know what? He does that out of his passion. I know. You know, and, I know. It's and like, for how many years now? And for how many years? And, and they keep crazy. doing it and well. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's kind of sad in this town because people want to, you know, cut your legs out when you start doing well. But, you know, Rick's managed and Lou too managed to yeah. avoid that because it's like there's no, 
you know, you know, no point, you know, right. because it's like, what's, you know, what's to be gained from it? It's not like he's a slick club owner, you <laughs> yeah. know, because it's like I always joke about you go in yeah. there, you go to a, a club show twice a year because you're one of the people who goes out twice a year and yeah. you see the place is packed with other people who go out twice a year and you think this guy's making large, right. not knowing he books 225 shows a year. Right. And, and not all, all of those, no, yeah. yeah, not all of them are packed, Agreed. but they're giving a gig to someone who's got up from... You know, Sault yeah. Ste. Marie that morning and drove down to do a show mm-hmm. that night and put a good show on. What's a show you've yeah. seen in the last couple of months that's really blowing your mind? Oh, what's a show that I've seen in the past couple of months that's really blown my mind? Oh, my God. Um, oh, I just see so many shows. What has blown my mind? And don't worry about being political that you're going to hurt uh, anyone's feelings. No, no, no. I'm trying to to say... God, what have I seen? There's just been so many that have come through. And I, you know, here's the thing. I've been seeing a lot of really young bands that are blowing my mind. Like, yeah. they're not even out of high school yet, right? Um, and they're like, they're 17, 18 years old, and they're like Kill killing it. it. Yeah. Killing it. And I'm, I'm like, hands down, they're like so further than I ever was. Ever. Yeah, ever. You know, <laughs> even yeah, now. They don't even know how good they are. <laughs> so right? good, right? It's, like, it's like when you're hot yeah, and you're 17. Exactly. You don't know you're hot. Well, you so think that's you're hot. one thing I've really seen a lot of. Um, <laughs> totally. Uh, yeah, I am, but you know, I'm I'm a rocker, right? So I'm yeah. right back to, you know, I, the Tung Fu was yeah. fantastic. You yeah. know, uh, uh, yeah. Oh my God. Like, so many great bands have come through that this ain't Hollywood. It's crazy. Yeah. You know, Johnny Winter. Um, oh my God. It just, you've got me on the spot because there's just been so many yeah, that I've seen. But it, the one thing that does stick out is how young these bands are yeah. and how great they are at such a young age yeah. and how adorable they are. And yeah. they sing and play and they've got, they're dressed yeah. and it's just fantastic. Yeah. I think it's, it's a rich time. Yeah. And, and I think that, uh, you know, people who are creative and ambitious and, and, and being that age and knowing that the old economy doesn't exist and you're going to have to do this yourself. We're going to separate the wheat from the chaff really quick. And there's going to be the leaders who are going to take that generation with that much talent to it, like a much wider audience, mm-hmm. you know, and I think these are like the, 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 the years, the lean years, the famine years before we go into where all of a sudden some guy can produce you for a reasonable price right. and, and, and give you, you know, before the thing would have been out of reach. Like technologically, we would have had to buy machines that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Right, right. Same thing, you would have had to, as an artist, come up with $25,000, which now you can do for $2,500. Yes. And so I think that's gonna open the door that the creative people now who are in marketing yeah. and advertising in these fields can have something and a real product that exists here and get it out to the world, you know, yes. make it happen. And I think that that's, that's something that I've seen happen that, of course, you know, I look at my kids and their kids and, and they can grab a computer and figure it out right away. Mm-hmm. So the ones who are 25, they've been doing it for a yeah. while. And so I look, I look, I look at that and, and I know exactly what you mean. I went and saw a few bands that, you know, the guys were so young and so good and I forgot for a second that I was an old man yeah. and I was that age and yeah. they're, they're, cause they're playing my music forgetting that it's in a yeah. 30 year cycle, right? Yes. So they're 17, I'm 47. Yeah. They're playing stuff I listened to yeah. in 1980, you yeah. know? No, I know. There's a great songwriter that came to Hamilton. I'm just trying to think of some great acts. Of course, bands are, there's so many great ones, but uh, there's a great little songwriter in this city right now by the name of Molly Babin. I don't know if you know this name. Mm. She's come from the East Coast and she really brings that East Coast sound with her. It's, a, it's a, Her writing is very folklore mm. a little bit, um, but she is a prolific lyricist and I just love her you must catch one of her yes. acts you'll well, have to, have to get her on the show songs. I'll start pursuing Definitely. her yeah, Molly you'll love Babin her. She's I'm coming a, for you she's got a million dollar <laughs> smile you'll love having her here well, she's like, um, Molly Babin I'm coming yeah. for you <laughs> that's right see Molly I love you the man of my dreams is my favorite song ever uh, so she's great but there's just so many I mean it could just the list is it does endless. it does yeah, you know especially just, if, if, if if you know it's available five six yeah. nights a week and you tend to like even go out for an hour or two you're like I can't even remember that band of those three guys from Tennessee but they were so great I know well and I'm finding that with the open stage too it's like these these, people are coming to the open stage who probably haven't played on a big stage before and they're up there playing and they're good you know so 
yeah, we're just, we're just, it's just so ripe, this city. I mean, and, you know, most cities are usually, and the music is such a great, just is such a pulse of yeah. any town, really. Yeah. Well, I want to play another cut off the new All CD. Right. It's fresh, it's hot, it smells great, sitting yeah. on the uh, windowsill. Yeah, this is the first time it's gone out public. It's gone, you know, yeah. once again, Barbershop Broadcast <laughs> is the first one to break it. How do you like that cherry? Is that cherry pie you smell on the windowsill there, Ryan? It's, yeah, well, that's, that's cherry funny. pie. That's very awesome. first lyric in this song is a cherry pick mama. Well, they're oh, in the oh, shitty sorry. side. There we go. Sorry. How did that happen? How did that happen? Use that little sensor song. <laughs> All right. Um, the lyrics are evocative. Is this a, uh, an indictment of corporate? It's Defender. Yes. It's about uh, what's happened to our politics. No, to, not at all. Not at all. See, uh, I'm building my own yeah. conspiracy here. I love it, eh? <laughs> no, it's just straight up rock and roll. Straight up rock straight and roll. Straight up rock and roll. There's no message other than... Uh, uh, no, you'll, 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 you'll take it. your own. You'll hear it. <laughs> okay, here we go from barbershoppodcast.com. Lynn Bieber and her secret boyfriends coming to you live. Is it going to change for the worse? I don't know. Pinstripe Defender from Lynn Beebe and the Secret Boyfriends, a rock and roll song. Boy, that that's old school, I guess, yeah. which is uh, new school. It's at school, right? You need to get schooled in that kind of rock and roll. Straight up. Got a lot of drive to it. And uh, on that note, music being, you know, the different styles that you've gone through, and now you're doing a record where you've got different styles because songs come to you like you said in one good chunk it's not like you're contriving it trying to yes. figure it out it's like um do you find that it's easy for you to kind of like the words come out and, you, and they make sense after you've written them or is it like okay this song feels like this because a lot of times i've when i've written i don't even know what i'm writing until after the fact and then i look at it, holy shit yeah. I thought I was just rhyming, and there is a story there, and it is about something. Yeah. You know? I usually do write a story, definitely. Um, 
And I, I mean, I don't, I mean, not every single word comes <laughs> comes yeah. from the sky, yeah. but uh, so yeah, there is some of the. Because a lot of people are hammer and tong, later. and they're very good at hammer yeah. and tonging a song yeah. and putting it together. Yeah, and I've worked with songwriters that sort of do the Harlequin romance formula. It's like, mm, I don't, I can't write like that. It's just. Yeah. I can't do it. I can't. Here's two verses. Here's a bridge. Here's a verse. I can't yeah. really do those formulas, it, um, which makes musicians I play with sometimes crazy because sometimes things are fives and sevens and yeah. nines. And, you know, Johnny Budd used to go mental sometimes. They're like, why can't you just do four bars? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, oh, well. That's that's the that's the Jethro Tull influence. <laughs> yeah, yes, you know, and, and and again, it's it sneaks through, and yeah. uh, you know, I like listening to my old vinyl. Do you still have records that you hang on to? Oh yeah, yeah. you like Absolutely. your you like your vinyl. I've got vinyl. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I don't think I'll ever throw mine away. Yeah. No, and, no, no. They're keepers. Yeah. yeah. And this emergency of youth will be a vinyl. Too. Or your cassette tapes. Or my cassette tapes. We've been yeah. a few times. Oh, Never Ryan can see Ryan away. can see vinyl, but he's just he's not buying it because that that was lost on his generation. It, would, it already. No, I was CDs. all over. I Were grew you? up on tapes. Did Absolutely, you? I had tons of Walkmans. Okay. I just don't see a tape player in this yeah. house. How about eight tracks? Eight tracks around. No, tracks, I no. did for a bit, but out of uh, like hipsterish hipsterish nostalgia, <laughs> I grabbed my oh, grandfather. Yeah when he was done with it and oh, I had some yes. old old eight tracks that were fun yeah and uh i think that uh the romanticism of the eight track you know proves that that inconvenience unless you know it's an inconvenience it's just part of it it's like turning the, a record over every 22 minutes i think is good for you <laughs> i think it's good for the artist because you kind of committed someone to 22 minutes versus two and a half minutes right, right? because yeah, we're a world gotcha. of singles right now yeah gotcha and it opened some doors and a lot of times i had the b-side was like a split personality yeah it's like or you know the record company wanted something but the artist was kind of free to to go on one side, or it could yeah. be a continuation of the story. Right. And or I, two I, different bands. Yeah, and I, awesome. I, yeah, and I think that's yeah. a lot. You know, the, of the unspoken part of music is that it can't be on the nose all the time mm -hmm. so much. Um, growing up, you know, you mentioned that there was, uh, you know, a myriad of different, in, you know, interests and people who really influenced you, mm -hmm. um, and you, you, you've caught a lot of live new music that's out there right now who's like had the longevity who do you look at and go you know what he or she has been doing this for 30 40 years and they oh. constantly blow me away who who would you... uh, stevie nicks would be one yeah. of those right. you know um yeah she had a great career but even today i love to listen to her interviews and i like to uh she's still a great singer um so definitely alice cooper yeah he's I can't, a smart how can guy I, mm -hmm. how can i not say you know um how can i not talk about the alice cooper group they were amazing amazing and uh, alice today could still sing like he did yeah. 30 years ago yeah. right so he's he's sustained for me um you know i don't know there's uh you know i'm, I'm i you know you know me i like the new york punk scene yeah. deborah harry of course i mean how can i not mention her uh even uh, David Johansson, right? Just all these old artists that are still doing stuff currently today. It's pretty amazing to see them. They're cool as ever, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So definitely those those would be ones that I would look up to for sure. All right. Um, now, when you, when you play live at the open stage... Um, you mentioned last time when it gets popular, it gets successful. You do less time playing. And yeah. Sometimes after a while, you're like, oh, I'm just doing, you know, I'm doing administration and I, I'm not getting up on my stage. But the same token, it's like you're throwing a party and people are getting it. Yeah, and that, that, that's the intent. That's yeah. the intent. And the great thing is, I, like, look at Andrew Aldridge. I mean, he's my co-host, but he's a killer guitar player. So what he's done now is he's, he plays with a lot of these musicians and it just embellishes their yeah. songs and it's, wildly great uh doug, doug on sound gets up on bass you know linda duemo has been a regular now getting on yeah. drums behind these artists so it ends up being a really great thing and i'm really happy about doing having that role and not playing so yeah. much i mean 
super great if I get a chance to sing a song or two, um, but just to just to administer it and let these people, because that's how I started. Yeah. You know, I wrote songs in my bedroom and it's like, now what do I do? Yeah. And so you're going to the open stages and you're like scared to death and yeah. you're wheedling through the songs and you're making mistakes and you're crack and crack to your tonight too. It's like, yeah. you, you crack, right? And yeah. it's like, ah! And then you keep going and then you get better and all of a sudden it's like, you're, you don't, the nerves start to settle down. And I hope, I want these artists to be successful too. Yeah. The, 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 there's their dreams. They're very serious. Some of these artists are very serious. They come in, they they feel they've got great songs. Yeah. They want them to be heard, and these are opportunities for them to get it yeah. out. And they may continue on. Hey, Melissa McClellan, do you remember remember yeah. when she showed up, 16 years old, hair dyed pink, little short punk girl sitting outside the Casbah waiting to go on the open stage. Hi everybody, this is my 21st song I've written to, you know, so yeah. far and I'm going to play it for you. And look at her today in yeah. White Horse and yeah. she's got a huge career. So start somewhere, yeah. right? Yeah, and, and have a dying confidence in what you do because yeah. th- throughout out, you know, you're going to doubt yourself. You certainly can't let other people be doubting you, yeah. you know, or letting that affect you at all. Because at the end of the day, I mean, you can pick apart what you are and what you, you know, but that has nothing to do with who you are, right. you know, and, and an individual who is confident and works hard at their craft, I think is going to be successful, you know, and, and again, how do you measure success? Yeah. If it's strictly dollars, you know, you're in the wrong, you're on the wrong business. <laughs> yeah. But if you're being fulfilled and yeah. people, your peers are going, they get it. Yeah. You know, that's like, that's what you need out of life. Yeah. You know. Um, I want to touch on uh, another recording, and this one's got a bit of a history with Ryan. Ryan, tell me what you remember about this one. Um, <coughs> this was, when did we do this? 2006? 2006. Yeah. Well back, yeah. This was at Steel City Studio, my old studio. And yeah, this was the coolest, the the most... The best. It was the best result that we had down there, and awesome. it was it was really cool because we had Steve Steve Sinix who's been here with Burn and Ethel yeah. and on his own. He played. We talked about this with Burn and Ethel. This was the track that he played. The Steel Man that was in our lobby. We were yeah. Steel City Studio. We had a big yeah. suit of armor in there, and uh, yeah, it was it was such a cool. Yeah, he played the drums on that. We on we that loaded armor. all forty eight tracks in Pro Tools every oh, single, really and I think we had to do a couple bounces. We're probably into the <laughs> fifty <laughs> and change tracks yeah. on this. He played anything in the studio that made a noise. We had so much cool percussion, and yeah, you'll hear it all on the track. That's yeah, so see, great. yeah. Anyone who's listening, see if they can pick out the all the, the different. Oh, different things I forgot about the hitting. song too. When I came down today, I was like, I could bring this. Yeah, I'm glad. And then you I did. brought it. I was like, I need to start playing the song again. It's a great song. Yeah. So cool. this this song is it. hasn't been played on uh, on air. It ha- well, it's it? been played on uh, um, Lose Control. Okay. Um, back back when it was In created, yeah. uh, and it hasn't I haven't done anything with it. Really so since, yeah, seven so. years in the can. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and there may be someone who's listening at some point in time who says, "Oh, you know what? I remember that." Yeah, you know? it was really at the beginning of the Evelyn Dix. The Evelyn yeah. Dix hadn't quite formulated yet. We, no. we did a show with Houston, um, and then Lori and I were just starting to feel each other out in terms of working together. Yeah, yeah. and that's we did this. Yeah, I don't even think at that when you guys first came in there was any idea of having her on there. It wasn't until right. we got it started. And you said, you were know we what? rehearsing for a show or something? I don't. Know what we were I think, doing no, there? This what were was, we doing there? It was for the the sampler disc that I was putting oh, together that never came right. to anything because we folded up the studio. But yeah, I've got right. you know what? And this song is supposed to be on the sampler. Yeah, I've still oh, got the masters for sixteen something songs that we recorded for a sampler disc that we never put out. And yeah, this was one of them. Well, this this is cool. It's yeah. cool, and you get and you get to hear it. And yeah. uh, I'm looking forward to it because I haven't heard it yet. So yeah, it's uh, called Outlaw. Outlaw, and from a. Uh, primordial version of the Evelyn Dix. Yeah. Lynn Beebe recorded at uh, Steel City Studio. Dave Collette and uh, Ryan Cannon here at yeah. BarbershopPodcast.com.
That's the greatest. It's all coming back to me now. Tony Randall on uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tony yeah. Hill or, uh, or Randall Hill. Hill. Randall Hill. Randall Hill. Randall yeah, Randall, Randall was on there. Yeah, Chris what Houston. Did I say Tony Randall. Yeah. Tony, <laughs> Tony Randall. No, Randall. he's he's awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was by, and it's like I know that guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I forgot about a lot of stuff on that yeah, track. It was, it was so good. That's pretty. pretty neat. Yeah, that was really neat. It was. Yeah, like that. that was a. Fun session that too. Was that fun. was it. Was a beautiful day. I remember yeah, we were half, th- right. and we had a ton of people in there. Like yeah. we had, we did it all in one day. Yeah. We had everybody come down that That's day. Right. Uh, yeah, that was nice a lot of fun. It'd be nice to hear that record someday, right? Yeah. I know. Now I'm thinking about that. I got all these masters to all these tracks. Yeah, maybe when I'm, you know, not doing a million videos in a podcast. Yeah, so right. I have time to mix all that Do shit. It. But yeah. yeah, one day. Get down to it. Well, you know what? We've had an awesome chat. Um, yeah. I'm going to put it to you. Do you feel like playing one more? Or? Um, I could. If you don't, if you don't, that's fine. Yeah. You know, it's whatever you're into. Maybe I'll do Final Farewell. Do Final since Farewell. we're ending the show. Yeah, we're ending the show okay, do and do the Final Farewell. farewell. Ryan's, right. Ryan's going to wrangle the mic back to singing position. Yeah. You see, we, we, we're, we're, we are looking for um, an intern who can do this sort of thing. Because <laughs> Ryan does not want to get up. The lad there looking for a student. A student who a wants student? To, to book 40 hours mm-hmm. <laughs> a week. It'll be more like four hours, but don't tell anyone. We're going to make you do a lot of work when you're here, but yeah. it'll be a lot of fun, too. Yeah. What well, sounds like. <clears throat> final farewell, final goodbye. This is the most difficult day of my life. No more engagements, no heated games. Somber black suit with a coffee stain. All hurt at the top of my lungs. All hurt at the top of my lungs. All hurt at the top of my lungs. Final farewell and a final goodbye. It happened last April. On a thunderbolt ride You jumped like a cat You fell to your side Heart started pounding When you looked to the sky Well, I fell on my knees And my throat went dry All hurt at the top of my lungs All hurt at the top
Buckshot BB live in the studio. It's been a great, great, great hour and a half with you. Thanks yeah, for so thanks. much for coming out. Thank you for having me. No, you know what? If you're going to uh, check out Woods the next time, people can uh, other Tuesday nights. Tuesday nights is open. Three forty-five James Street North. Yeah. And Hamilton, Ontario, a uh, really good open stage. You can uh, meet Lynn there. Keep your eyes peeled for the secret boyfriends. There's going to be some stuff happening. And uh, once again, thanks for coming out to uh, Barbershop Podcast. Yeah, Ryan, thanks for uh, for pushing the buttons. Pushing the buttons. No and problem. I was going to say tethering the uh, sales and sticking on the rudder. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice get analogy. Us, get yeah, us through there. Yeah, sail like through, sail yeah. through. Did have the huge storm, but it was, uh, it certainly didn't blow. <laughs> it was, it was good. Thanks everyone for coming awesome. out. See us next week on Barbershop Podcast. Thank you. Bye.